Safety on the drill. Why do we need safety on the drill? Well, there's more to it than just drilling holes. Which type of drill? Cordless, electric, or simply a hammer drill. So you're drilling into masonry, steel, or just wood. These are all things we'll talk about in addition to the types of drills, where to use them, how to stand. All these things are things you need to factor in when you're using a drill. Let's move into the types of drills. In the drill family, there's about six different types. The staple is the corded electric drill. Been around for a while, 50 to 100 years. It's the most economical. Next type is a cordless drill. In today's market, they're arranged from 9 volt to 18 volt. Keyless chucks, a lot of durability. A lot of times you don't need the 110 volts with an electric drill. You just need to be able to drill a simple hole. People think the electric drill was the first one invented, though. Technically, cordless drills were. Although this one's not battery operated, it's truly cordless. For accuracy purposes, the drill press is the drill of choice. The head comes down perfectly straight and square to the work. There's also a depth gauge that you can set if you need to only drill halfway through, such as cup hinges, uh, adjustable shelf holes. In the homeowner field, you've got a cordless screwdriver. Now you generally range from four to nine volts, very inexpensive. Throw in the kitchen drawer or the, or the toolbox for insert and removing screws. A relatively new one in the last 10 or 15 years is the impact driver. It takes the technology of the air impact tools that are used on semi trucks, tractors, NASCAR, and puts them into a portable power. This is great for putting in bolts, screws with a, little, a lot of power and yet a lot of speed. The next type is the hammer drill. A bigger brother of the hammer drill is a rotary hammer. Both of these are used in construction. They're designed to drill through masonry, concrete walls, steel, heavy timbers. In addition to the drills, you know what kind of bit to use. The most common type is a twist bit. It's what you think of when somebody says, go get me a drill bit. You have screwdriver bits. These can also be socket adapters, straight blades, stars, squares, or a multitude of different bit types, but they're all screwdriver bits. But the problem with uh, the twist bit, though, is you're limited in diameter by the size of your chuck on your drill. Well, because the, with a twist bit, the larger the bit gets, so does the shank. So the maximum diameter is the maximum that can go in this chuck here. So there's three different types of bits that can get us a larger hole. The most economical is what they call a spade bit or a paddle bit. It generates a quick, fast, large cut. Generally these go anywhere from about a half inch to two inches. But they produce a rougher cut. The reason they produce a rougher cut is they only have two teeth. The key to a cleaner cut is more teeth on a bit or a blade. So we'll move up to the hole saw. This one's typically used in construction more often. It's got a lot of teeth around the rim, and the outside rim is interchangeable with the center pilot bit. The downside to this type of bit is it's designed to drill all the way through. In woodworking, that's not always the case. So we'll move on to what's called a Forstner bit. Some people call it a Fostner bit, either one. It has a lot of teeth produces a cleaner cut. Now to get a cleaner cut, you've got to slow your feed rate down a little bit, so keep that in mind. It's got two chisels across the bottom and a nice, small, narrow starter point. This produces a flat bottom hole. For example, cup hinges, counter bores, adjustable shelf pegs. These are your most expensive, but they're worth it for woodworking. There's a couple other bits in the twist family. Back to the construction side is an auger bit. It's got a screw starter point which allows it to grab into the wood. These are like electrical contractors and plumbers love these because they, they get through faster than a spade bit will. And it has large flutes to let the sawdust get out of the way quickly. 
On the woodworking side, this one's called a brad point bit. It looks just like a twist bit, but it's got a starter point to keep it from walking. I've been mentioning a couple parts of the drill bits. Starter point, shank, cutting flutes. Every bit has three parts. They all have a starting point. They all have cutting flutes. And they all have some sort of shaft that the chuck needs to grab a hold of. Now how does the drill hold on to the bit? Well, there's three different methods. They're called chucks. The most traditional is what they call a keyed chuck. Requires a wrench. Most commonly, it's found attached to the end of the cord so you don't lose it in the toolbox. You would disconnect your power, obvious, always when you're changing the bits. A hand adjust the chuck by adjusting the collar. Hand tighten it. Then take the wrench, and it's recommended to tighten all three or tightening points to get an even grip on the drill bit. The disadvantage is it requires a wrench that you could lose. The big advantage, though, is the strength of the grip that it produces. That's why you're going to find these. If you look here, you're going to find them on the drill press. The, mo the newest type is a keyless chuck. The advantage is tool-free, quick bit changes. Again, there's two rings on this one. Loosen it so the bit slides in there. Hand tighten it, and you're good to go. No wrenches to lose, which is the big advantage. However, I don't have the grip that I would get with a keyed chuck. The most, on an impact driver, there's what they call a locking collar. Depending on the manufacturer, you're going to push or you're going to pull on this ring. And what it does is it opens up a ring and grabs a hold of this locking collar. And if you don't have the locking collar on this type of bit, it'll slip out while you're trying to use it. So make sure you have the correct type. When talking about inserting the, the bits, how far do I use to insert the bit? All these chucks are different sizes. They have different depths. The shaft on the drill bit is also different lengths, different depths. The most common rule is you want to put it in as far as it will go if possible. However, on the smaller bits, the jaws of the chuck can grab a hold of the cutting flutes and potentially damage the cutter or have, lose your grip on the bit. So put it in as far as it can go or until the end of the shaft and give it a good twist tight. 